Hi there, and welcome to Mendel Plays. It's been a little while since I've had the opportunity to record something for this 2000 plus series I'm trying to do. In between my first recording and this one, uh, Clay has released an update to the game called the Sweet Dreams Update. And one of the new aspects of that, the story traits mode, is something that I have to start a new colony in order to be able to take advantage of. So I want to do a few more episodes of this just to kind of talk about a few other things in my late game design because I really enjoy the late game stuff more than I enjoy the early game stuff. But I do want to start a new colony, try to do the all achievements mode, and try to see what's up with the new story traits aspect of the game. In this episode, I thought I'd talk a little bit about my zoo asteroid. This came about because I really wanted to challenge myself to create isolated environments in a pretty confined space, and I thought that a zoo for critters would be a good way to do that, since all critters have very different requirements in terms of their environment, their temperature, in order to be able to survive and in order to thrive. I decided to do it on the Gassimu planet because since the Gassimus don't drop any eggs and instead come down in the form of gassy moo meteor strikes or whatever they ca they call it moodier strikes i think is what they call it that it'd be easier to build this zoo in the gassy moo space rather than keep on carting gassy moos back and forth between their home planet versus other planets i didn't realize this when i first started out but this also turned out to be a pretty easy way to set up the environment because the environment on that planet by default is generally incredibly cold. You can see that most obviously in the chlorine that here over on this side which is mostly liquid which has a very negative Fahrenheit requirement before its state changes into a gas. You can see that I started to build myself a cooling loop at the very top here when I first landed on this asteroid but then I stopped building it because I simply didn't need it. The environment was a lot easier for me to say okay I want to heat this up to what it needs to be. The cold can stay the way that it is. And look at that even before I can even talk about this something's come out in the printing pod that's giving me the opportunity to have some shine nymph eggs which is the one remaining critter that I've yet to be able to do here. So I'm just going to throw that down and I guess start setting up what I want to do with that, which I think I was going to do, what was I going to do? I think I was going to actually do it in this area over here, but I need to make some changes to this whole thing in order to kind of get that to go. Anyway, let's get back to what I was originally talking about here. So this was the first area that I set up, this Gassimu area, and again, I was a little bit lazy on on how to deal with the plants. I just found an area that had a bunch of naturally growing uh, gas grass and just threw a bunch of window tiles on top so that the light could actually go through, which you're not going to be able to see right now because it's nighttime, but enough light kind of comes down in order to have some, but not all of these... Uh, grow pretty efficiently. It doesn't really matter that much since Gassy Moo is infinitely replenished, but it was good practice anyway. The way that this kind of comes in here, I have here a uh, airborne critter bait that is something that they are drawn towards, but I didn't want to keep on losing the baits. Whenever a Gassy Moo is not in this square room right here, these doors are all open and they then sense this critter bait and start to drift towards it. But as soon as they enter into this area, then these doors close, these doors eventually close, and these doors open, which allow the gas moves to drift into this room. And then as soon as they drift into this room, the whole thing resets. The reason this door is closed right now, even though there's a gas move in here, is because I also have this critter sensor set to keep this whole thing locked if the number of gassy moves is over three, because I don't want to have it be overcrowded. Beneath that, I have three other areas that I created. The first one is this area for Slicksters. Second one is an area for my Drecos. Third one is an area for the Plug Slugs. The Slicksters and the Drecos, I have heat injecting uh, through this tepidizer, surrounded in super coolant and a super coolant liquid loop. Basically, the uh, tepidizer will activate if it deems that the supercoolant is a low enough temperature. And then for each one of these areas, when the temperature is determined to be too low, then 
the super coolant gets sub routed into this little area and injects a little bit of a heat spike into this diamond tile and radiant area. The plug slug area I have set up a uh, timer that opens and closes the door because I didn't really want to be constantly feeding this area and lose all of the ore at the time that I was feeding it since I had a limited amount of any ore that I had shipped over to this planet. One of the changes to the Sweet Dreams update was that slugs can now eat refined metal and that's a great change because uh, I have a few infinite sources of refined metal that are coming out of volcanoes. You can see here that I have um, new smog slugs that have evolved into here because I had this environment pretty much as hydrogen and natural gas and that increases the probability of smog slugs coming out as opposed to plug slugs or the liquid version of this, the sponge slugs. This side was what I developed first and had a very careful thought out process on how to control the environment. Once I actually came over to this side, I started to get other things coming out of the printing pod and didn't have a good way to try to deal with uh, this half versus the other half to do the same sort of setup. So I changed it a little bit in one temporary, instead using a few uh, space heaters to warm up the area. This one specifically so the hatches would not die off. This specifically to create a warm enough environment for these arbor trees to grow um, and give the pips food. For my poke shell ranch, the only thing of note here is that there's way too many poke shells in here. Uh, there's something wrong with the way that I have this set up, or the rate of egg drop is something that I just don't understand. I haven't actually ranched poke shells all that much, so the only thing that I know is that if the eggs are in the same room as the poke shells themselves, then they get angry and start attacking the dupes. And that's the reason why I have these auto sweepers here. Anytime that there's an egg that's at all in this room, that it moves over into this area right here. I discovered that if the door was open, and then the poke shells still see it and can still be angry. So I have this locked unless the critter sensor determines that it is no longer an egg, but is actually a spawn. When it is a spawn, then it opens up the door so that the spawn can come out and then it relocks itself. So that way these poke shells are never angry at all. I have, oh, they all died out. That's unfortunate. I did have some puffs in this area because I ran out of space. The, the biggest thing that I think I would do if I was going to redo this whole thing, I would probably make all these ranches about half the size that they are because it's really about showcasing the critters and not about any degree of efficiency. So even if they're overcrowded a little bit or I can just say I just want to do one or two or I wanted to have the room so I could actually showcase different critter morphs if I could get that to go in different areas. The second time that I do this, because I really like the idea of, of refining this whole zoo concept, I think that that's what I would do. The last thing I'll showcase real fast is these shovels. I created a small pen for shovels. They can't drill through metal tiles or go through these pneumatic doors at all. So that helps to make sure that they don't stray away and that they don't drop eggs that then also stray away. The main thing that I'm working on right now is to try to find an infinite supply of regolith for them. And that then leads into what I'm currently working the most on, which is the regolith planet and doing some stuff that I have not had to deal with since the spaced out DLC actually launched, which is setting up a big set of bunker doors that can then drop a bunch of regolith that I can then mine and then auto sweep and then send over on a rocket or set up a whole line of interplanetary launchers to then send to that zoo planet. Originally, my idea was to do that through this rocket, was to set up a uh, cargo bay that can hold 27 tons of regolith and then just ship it back and forth. I started to set up a hydrogen and oxygen generator here specifically so I could get liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen in this area and have this be the home base of this rocket so it could go back and forth between this and the zoo asteroid because right now if I want to refuel this I have to go back to my home asteroid which is where I have my main liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen set up to go. So that is my zoo planet. First attempt at trying to do something like this. I've learned a bunch of stuff along the way. I would really redesign this whole thing very differently if I was going to do it again. But as a first attempt, I'm also not too unhappy about this. I think that when I do my all achievements run, I probably will end up doing 
another Zoo Planet. Like, I think that any time that I play this game into the future, Zoo Planet is probably going to be a permanent feature. I have ideas about how I want to change this in the future to make it a little bit more controlled, a little bit more precise than what it is right now. And it's been a lot of fun. A lot of times going on to landing on other asteroids without something like the tree, I don't really have any good ideas or any focus on what I want to do with them. And this is the first one where I said, you know what? I have a lot of ideas here that can make it unique to me and make it a lot of fun to build out. So yeah, I think that does it for this episode. Hope you enjoyed it. Clearly, if you have any questions or if you have any thoughts, I would love to hear those in the comments. Insert your standard like and subscribe plug here. And please, always feel free to reach out and tell me your story because no matter who you are, I would love to hear it.